session. Uh, today we're going to be working on the open source Cherry Life project. Cherry Life is a well-being uh, kind of analytics tool where we keep track of the activity level of residents in elder care homes. And today we're adding a feature uh, for user permissions where we can assign users to particular home groups. And that way they can see the homes in that group as well as we can control visibility of residents in the homes and, and whatnot. It keeps it simple for the staff who may or uh, may only be working with a few homes, particularly in large systems where there can be hundreds of homes and dozens of groups. So this group is sort of an abstraction. We're trying to keep our data relatively flat, our data model, uh, but we'll address whether or not we need another level or uh, level of nesting in the subsequent work. So far in this task, um, I've got an interface in the user management screen. It's slightly buggy. There's uh, this person kind of weird bug. Let me double check here real quick. Where sometimes the group assignment doesn't appear, even though the data is there, and it makes it in the template all the way to the point where this form renders. It's really weird. And I'm thinking one thing I could try is I don't really need to assign this group select to the template instance since I'm using it in the same sort of auto run function. So I might be able to simplify it. I'm not sure if that's adding any overhead, but it just occurred to me last night that that might be the problem or somehow related to the problem. Because of that, this Slim Select API is pretty straightforward. No, it didn't fix it, damn. Cost. Weird thing is just console logging or setting a breakpoint. I need to figure out how to debug these applications properly here. This information exists, right? Before the widget is rendered, it's right there. It's logging it in line 41. But when I set the data, It just doesn't appear. Another idea would be you know, these are asynchronous, but Meteor makes it makes your asynchronous code look and act as a synchronous. code so let's try this without uh, any assignment so we can chain this <laughs> I wish it was just an argument I could pass right there that would maybe simplify this yeah, it's 
still there, but it's not getting the the groups are there in the dawn. is often enough that I'm going to get reports of it. About every other time. You know, about 30% of the time, you know, 50% of the time. I don't know how to debug it. DOM is available. This is reactive data source. So when that subscriptions are ready, it'll run in everything inside here. It'll find us the permissions and get the group IDs. And again, they're all logging here. gone through multiple several of these multi-select widgets and I don't want to switch out the multi-select widget again there's always just some gotcha it's so frustrating W, yeah, it's got the right idea each time. I'm gonna try to sleep it, see if maybe giving up the Dom a little bit more time to catch up. This is really bad looking good, but.
maybe if I delay, so I'll go back to where, render the multi-select up here. It doesn't even seem like this set timeout is working. Just refresh the page. Because it's loading it right off the bat. Man. Well, alternatively. Just do this right in the DOM instead of using the slim select API. So let me just check this out HTML multi select selected. I think it's just putting selected. Yeah, cool. Selected equals selected. Or just select it. So inside of this groups, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to annotate each one as being selected or not. That's going to work just every time. This will clean up the code here quite a lot. And I won't need this template subscription ready check either because, well, let me think. Yeah, probably will to make sure that the uh, form has been rendered. Select option, select a widget.
I don't know of a clean way to do this. Um, See if there's a native JavaScript um, way to do this. Includes, yeah. Okay, well, let's put it out. So we're going to check if the current group ID is in the existing user group IDs. I think we had a better name for that. User permission. It's a little bit long, a little bit verbose. Oops. Uh, so then You can use an object to sign or the group with the selected property which should be a boolean and should make its way into the dom let's see user id is not defined template helper So where do we have the user ID template instance? All right, now my function is getting a little bit out of hand. See if I can get it to work. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and yet another gotcha. Hmm. So 
So one is they seem to be sharing groups in two if I remove one. Oh, okay. That's why I give it to Temple Distance. Oh, okay, this is a different bug. My goodness. Yeah, so I wanted to use it. In the event handler. That's why I signed it here. All right, got it. So some more reactivity is breaking down. What is save functions not working? two permissions. There's zero permissions. So that seems to be working. Oh, oh, shit.
believe this selected. Equals true is invalid. So let me think here for a second. Correct. All right. All right. There we go. So basically, yeah, I have to, it needs the string selected or selected equals selected in order to work. Now it seems like the reactivity is working. Look at another page. Users. Yes.
Looks like I can simplify this. No, it is working. Let's see. User permissions. I'm getting the wrong document identifier. I need the permission group ID. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's what I, I broke there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I don't know if I'm able to make this much simpler.
let's go ahead and commit these changes and come back and do my localizations a little bit. But all we did was added the selected property here. But first, we needed to annotate groups with selected or not. Yeah, I'm using the, um, I'm not using React here, I'm using Meteor uh, Framework with Blaze Templating. Uh, welcome to the channel. Sorry for a little bit of a delay in response, I'm not sure when you type those questions. Um, this is tentative, but I'm really considering uh, at some point porting this over to Vue.js. Uh, it's very similar to Blaze, it has similar call lifecycle hooks and um, you know, it's just HTML templates, things like that. So most of this code would still be very, um, usable. And I like the simplicity and community aspects also, as well as sort of the conventions following uh, established conventions, like separation of concerns, meaning separating structure, function, and style as different concerns. All right, cool. So now we've got our group selector working. Let's go ahead and work on the visibility. So when a user belongs to a group, unless they're admin, they should only see homes for the groups in which they belong. So this user should only see the own Nella group. So for that, I'll probably need an incognito window. I'll start on the homes page. Actually, just let me add a localization here real quick. So we're, yeah, um, pretty much. Just didn't want to invent any UI framework here. I'm not going to spend too much time on CSS and <laughs> Bootstrap gives me a quick and responsive um, templating language with useful components like buttons and um, icons and things like that and panels. Um, project I'm working on at uh, in my day job, we're building with Vuedify, so we're using material design components. It's pretty nice, I like the, it's the same idea though, you just use a component library, uh, whether or not it's Bootstrap or Vuedify or Material UI, it saves you a lot of time, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not the best to design those type of things. And it looks decent. 
But yeah, my boss, he kind of, he doesn't like the bootstrap framework either. I think there's, it's easy to not like something that's popular. I don't know, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> what, do you have any recommendations for good, uh, like CSS component libraries or frameworks? I've, I've been reading about Tailwind CSS. Oh, are you being, I can't tell if that's sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bootstrap's pretty nice. It, it's gotten me pretty far, too. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the Tailwind CSS? If your people are more... Okay, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really worked with it, but I like that you can compose your own widgets based on just the semantics of how it should look. Yeah, I'm not that great at CSS. I'm going to start looking at the, uh, um, you know, the CSS grid and, and modern, how to write modern CSS. I would like to learn more about that, Flexbox and whatnot. Nice. Do you all work on any open source projects? Like, do you have any code out there? Yeah, maybe I can check out that Tailwind. Just for what it's worth, this Vutify has been really nice. In particular, um, it's got two components that I've f found really useful. This data table. Let's see if it'll render here. You know, with sorting and pagination and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're using a data table uh, sort of in this Jerry Life project, but it's nothing, it, it pales in comparison. Uh, this is really nicely done. Uh, what else do we got? There's something else that... Well, just little things like these snack bars that just pop up wherever you tell it. Top right, bottom. That's pretty cool. Stuff like that. I'm having to use a library for that. In the, actually, in the Jerry Life project, we're not using any kind of snack bar. Thing. Let me double check here. We're using a calendar widget. And some multi-select widgets, but yeah, it's just kind of bootstrap bootstrap notifications. So yeah, there's some room for improvement here. Oh, TypeScript to C. That sounds pretty cool. I don't know. What about uh, TypeScript? Let me think here. Like WebAssembly or something like that. What would you do with the C code? Is it platform specific? You're just learning. <laughs> okay, now I think you're being sarcastic. A TypeScript to C can transpiler in Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty interesting. Let me know if you get that open source. I'd, I'd be curious to check it out. Let me think. Okay, so we got to get these permissions in here. Okay, yeah, I can't tell. From, so, a TypeScript to C transpiler in Ruby language. Uh, web assemblies. It's harder than C. I have no idea. I've never even seen web assembly code. I've just been reading headlines. All right, so this new user, I can't remember their password. They belong to one group. That's weird that it's not showing up. Oh man, did my bug come back? Oh crap. All right. So new at user.com. Oh, and you can't see that incognito window, can you? Damn it. <clears throat> I 
All right, there we are. So right now, new user sees everything. And when these, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, um, but I didn't have any viewers at that point. When uh, this tool is being used at a residential care home uh, with something like 500 residents and maybe twice as many staff, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but essentially each home in the, in the system where we've deployed this has about 15 residents and the staff only work at one or a few homes typically in what would be called a home group. So we don't wanna overwhelm people with irrelevant knowledge, particularly because we're getting ready to roll this out to a lot more um, homes in the region. So we should only, for this user logged in to see, oh no, I have to write that permissions code. See what I change here? Anything? Oh yeah, I was working on <laughs> localization. Got into an interesting conversation. Let me just finish that. Open file. Get these localization. ITN tokens in place. Oh man. And for some reason, uh, well. Just VS Code doesn't really know about Blaze templates. I don't think there's a very mature um, plugin for Meteor and Blaze. So our localization stuff is in, whoops, the lib client i18 in. I'll just work on the English. Language. Our main user base is in Finland. We actually built this tool for some care homes in the city of Tampere. And so it's kind of grown up here. Edit user groups. over the settings page as the admin user. I want to make sure these uh, localization strings are going to render into the template when I get them commented out or uncommented. Edit user groups, header. I usually forget to do this localization stuff and have to come back as a follow-up task. What kind of, a, what IDE do you all use or how do you do, let's see, uh, Quantum, what are you writing your Ruby code in and uh, was it meme? Meme speak user, you said you're a designer, a noob in a design agency. What kind of tools do you use for the design process? Adam, yeah, I was using Adam for a while. That's a good, that's a pretty solid, uh, almost IDE. I just found some shortcomings. Vim, yeah, Vim's pretty hardcore. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm not sure, I mean, it would take me forever to just get basic things set up in Vim, like code completion or IntelliSense and things that pretty much just worked out of the box in VS Code. For a long time, I was avoiding VS Code because I didn't want sort of Microsoft to be spying on my every keystroke. Cancel button. But I think they moved uh, some of the, what do they call that? The uh, well, analytics or whatever, what do they call those? Tele telemetry, they moved it 
to being opt in or easy to opt out one of the two and I opted out I believe and now GitHub owns or Microsoft owns GitHub anyway so Adam's pretty much still <laughs> still Microsoft property yeah I have to hop into Vim I usually actually use Nano when I'm SSHing I'm pretty <laughs> Pretty conservative, or I don't know what that would be called. My friend Conrad at work makes fun of me for using Nano. Okay, cool. We should have now localization for all the buttons and on-screen text. Yeah, we absolutely have to have it here because our users in Finland, um, you know, they speak Finnish, although. Pretty much everyone since uh, around the 1970s has taken English here, so it's a, it's pretty easy to get by uh, without learning Finnish in Finland, which has been one of my kind of downfalls. All right. No, I'm from the United States, but I moved here to be with family. And I'm, I know a little bit of Suomi language, but only I recognize things I don't, I'm not able to say very much. <laughs> Where are y'all from? Let's see. Somebody's already mentioned that. Quantum and meme speak user. I don't see if you're any mention of where y'all are from. Belgium, cool. All right, so now I'm going to log out with my admin user. And then if you don't want to answer, that's cool too. I understand if it's private. All right, so on. now we're going to hop over. I have to figure this out at three levels, basically. Um, and without being too sloppy and writing the same code over and over, but basically a user should only see the group that they're in on this page. And when viewing a home page uh, directly, they should get like a what, 403 or whatever, not authorized on groups, on homes where they're not a member of the parent group. And then when viewing a resident page, uh, this is kind of nice, boom, boom. We just did that a little bit ago. They should get a not authorized when viewing a resident page that is not, that, uh, is not a part of a home it's not part of a group that they're a member of. And I think that's about it, except we allow anonymous access to uh, the resident page. You have to have the super secret identifier and it sort of an anonymizes the resident name. And, and we're not really collecting a lot of personal data here. So we kind of thought that that was a re reasonable compromise, even with this uh, like GDPR and whatnot. So we can change the language. So that said, that's what I'm going to be working through today and probably a little bit in the next in the coming days um, because I'm getting ready to sort of pick up my son. He's at an event today, so I'm only going to be coding for a little bit longer. Yeah, right. Uh, that's totally inspired by GitHub. <laughs> I'd uh, like to do it. Uh, just a horizontal line like GitHub does. I think it would take up less space uh, and just show like one year of activity or whatever. But I think the calendar is more natural for people who aren't like looking at GitHub on a regular basis. The point is to highlight activity and patterns of activity. Uh, and I think the GitHub approach is a little more effective in that regard. But you also have to kind of 
not surprise people. So I've just left it at this multi-calendar mode, even though most of these are blank in a lot of cases. Okay, so we go to views, homes. I believe now instead of subscribing to all homes and all groups, yeah, Prince will be surprised. Meme speak user, you should know something about that coming from a, a design perspective. <laughs> but are you are you all have you done any uh, data visualization projects? Okay, so now I need to subscribe to current user groups, and then in each of these groups, I think I'll move this. Um, I'll subscribe to the homes, the group homes within the group template up here, home group. Yeah, I kind of clutched up this naming stuff in our system, but the residents live in group homes in real life and we have homes that are in groups. So they're home groups. This is a home group, I don't know. <laughs> nice and confusing. Hmm, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. I was just reading an article on how uh, Vue.js works underneath the thing, and it, I don't know much about most of this stuff anyway, but it basically it parses the template to an abstract syntax tree. Uh, you Neo, know, that might be kind of cool to check out from, from your perspective. Yeah, there might already be tools for that. I don't know, yeah. Remember, Firefox used to have this, it's not an abstract syntax tree viewer, but a DOM, a 3D DOM viewer. That was pretty cool. You can do something with WebGL, probably. Or, or um, D3.js. All right, so let's grab, let's change this subscription here to being just current user groups. Nice. So I'll need a publication for that. Groups. All right. Current user group and everything is nice and linted for me on automatically. I've been enjoying that. Current user group, so taking a, a user ID as the argument. And you know, it might not even need that user ID because then you would spoof it. Since I'm saying current user group, I can actually get that user ID from the Meteor session. Mm, what is it? Meteor current user. Checking Google over here. There's AST Explorer, an online AST Explorer, but it doesn't quite visualize it. It's more like converting it to YAML. Python AST Visualizer. Ooh, yeah, check this one out. This is pretty cool. Boom. Hey, look at that. Is that kind of what you're thinking about? Sort of a graph like? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, what do you think of Python language? I've been enjoying working with that. And this is just JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but uh, a little bit of Python in there for our automation, automated testing. All right, let's see. So now I will just have Onella once I get this written. I don't know if I, this is going to work. So let's try it out. I 
and save that. Current user groups linted everything. Nice. All right, cool. So meteor current user is not a function. Oh man. So you probably are, you haven't used Python in a while. You're probably have you worked with Python three much? There's some really great stuff happening in Python language. Let's see, where's meteor current user? How do I get that? Meter dot user. This is going to break something. Okay, great. We have no data. Yeah, there are still people who are stubbornly staying on Python 2.7 in even the, you know, Python is, it's deprecating 2.7 like next year, basically. It's time to move on, but I understand that some people are really concerned about, uh, maybe they have a lot of co code that they would have to support or something, but it's, yeah, it's been 10 years. It's time to do it. Let's see. So now we've got the current user ID so I can get the permissions. Uh, permission group permission groups you know what I should really just make this a method let me think here because I'm going to duplicate this code right off the bat the problem is methods aren't quite universal let me just double check this Under settings. Ah, well, yeah, it's just this one. It's not a big deal. A couple lines. I think Meteor's smart enough that I can just say group ID is one of these. Let's see if that worked. In essence, change to publication. I'm wondering if I have to refresh. Group's fine. Group ID is one of the existing user permission group IDs. All right, refresh that and see if everything's breaking. Yeah, so that's working, so perhaps. Let me see if I'm getting any data from this. Nothing. All right, I have to check this syntax. Groups, oh, no, no, it's just. I'm not grabbing permissions. Permissions has a property group ID. I, th I was confusing. I was confusing myself there. I'm adding now groups. So I've got the group IDs, and I think I just pass it. I'm not even sure if I need. 
an object. Let's double check. Yowza, yeah, new. Selector can't be an array, yeah, yeah, selector's gotta be an object. But I think it'll assume, I was gonna try to destructure that. That's eh, not gonna work either. I think I need to just tell it the key. All right, to the docs. And I might need ID in or something like that. And dollar sign. Dollar sign in group IDs. Yeah, there we are. All right, no worries. I thought Meteor was gonna do some some helpful stuff there. Maybe I'm not putting the syntax in right to pass this array of IDs. If you pass it an individual string, I believe it'll automatically select the document without having to specify the key, the ID key. There we go. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we just see the correct home group. Now, commit this. Whoops. So I did some linting there automatically, but the crux of this change is changing the subscription. Next, I will move this home subscription to the group, home group. But for now, I'm keeping it so things work. Add current user groups publication and subscribe to current user groups. And again, I didn't have to pass this argument because it's meter has the current user ID. So that's cool. I can grab that on a server that keeps track of this session. Now, let me just close everything out and get my bearings. And now I'm going to break it. There will be no homes. So homes, each group has group JS. So I've been passing the data in from the parent template, I guess, or just through a subscription. How does this work? Okay, art. Homes table. Let me just double check how this data is getting in here. Views, homes. So each group, ah, oh yeah, so yeah, I'm passing it in here. Each group is getting rendered as a home group. That's correct. And then the home group template. Ah, oh, I forgot to localize that. I'm actually going to delete this, I believe. Uh, we'll just have one path to add the staff. 
for now. That was what was agreed with my partner Mario. Uh, so if homes. Yeah, that's been actually, well, I'm not sure what Pcrypt is actually doing, I guess for password encryption or something. Um, but this has been a pain in our side for a while with Meteor. I don't know how widely used this Pcrypt package is, but we've been having to drag it along. I guess I could just do that. And it's really painful because it doesn't compile on all platforms with equal success. Like I think we've had troubles on Windows and depending on the version of Meteor and the version of Bcrypt, uh, the compile step will break. And we've had developers who couldn't even get started, get the development environment set up because of this dependency. Okay, so there should be a, a homes helper here that I'm overlooking. These are events. There's only events here. Homes must come in from the parent template, so I'll need to make a home template. Home helper. What is going on? Home group. Where am I missing this? Home group. Dude, this is a baffler. What is going on? So this actually is not where that's going to go. So I need to subscribe. I need to grab an instance, reference the instance. Just for consistency. Ooh, what the heck? That is from a different project even. <laughs> I didn't get that. That was pretty trippy. PubSub, I'm not even using PubSub in that other project. Oh my, where did that come from? Okay, so Bcrypt for pas uh, password hashing. Yeah, we've just had troubles compiling. I wasn't yeah necessarily dissing on Bcrypt, but when we've had older versions, and particularly we were stuck on an old version for a long time, it was problematic. All right, so I've got a template instance of this. Let's do um, home group homes. Oh, boy. With a group ID. So let's get that subscription active. Group homes. Homes well, yeah. Homes belonging to group. <laughs> homes belonging, where was I? I'll just reuse this one. I'm not even sure if this is used widely a few places.
should be good. Oh man. Got some stuff breaking. Oh boy. Home group helpers. It's like just destructuring. Oh, uh, wait a minute. No, no, that's correct. Templar. Dude. Yeah, that would be cool if, if oh, group ID is not defined. If I could suppress the bcrypt warning. Yeah, of course it's not defined. So, where should I get it? Maybe. It's already in the template instance data was. This is really weird. I don't know where uh, this home's helper came or went, but there it is. Now it's working. And I'll fix these in a moment. What did we do? Let's take a look. Not that one, this one. So move homes subscription to group. And what do I do here? This is just lint and destructuring. Let's fix these localization tags while I'm here. There's only a couple of them. Add staff. Oh, no, no. Actually, um, I had originally had the idea. Get that log back, log back in. Uh, that they could also add staff from here, but. And really, I'd like to just keep this um, PR scope kind of limited, and we agreed just to put the group management here on the users page for now, because when we're introducing the feature, the admin user is going to be having to go and tag all of the users to their group. So, and I've already got enough to do. Oh. Uh, just with this regular permission stuff. I just noticed my uh, what groups. Yeah, that's correct. It's actually working correctly, but they're an ad uh, was admin user. Was that Tom Miller? Admin user should see all of them, but they're only they're being subject to this permission. So good. I found that. So Okay, cool, yeah. See you around, Quantum. Thanks for chatting. Have a good day. Enjoy your lunch. So I need to... 
basically put an exception for admin users. And, uh, and the publication. user role. So for user role management, we're using this package called alanning. Media roles, I'll just pop it over here. Users in role, logged in user, admin. This is basically what we want. Right there. Okay, that's our website under construction. careful here I shouldn't access this property unless I'm sure that it exists I don't think there's a high likelihood people will be subscribing unless they're logged in but in any case that's a common source of bugs so maybe I'll leave that top level if We're going to see this turn yellow pretty soon. Oops. So let's see, admin should now see everything. There we go. Okay, well, this has been a pretty good session. I think it's a good stopping point, too. I uh, will continue the work later, drilling down to the home view and the resident view. I just got to think about it a little bit more, and it's been an hour and a half, I believe, that I've been working on this, so it's good to take a little break here and there. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate everybody in the chat room for stopping by, and uh, it's nice to have those little discussions about development and learning what other people are up to and interested in. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you around. Have a great day.